Planning Committee. My name is Councillor Martin Seaton and I'm the chair of this committee. Before we start the meeting, I have a few announcements to make about the meeting rules. This meeting will be recorded by the Council and uploaded to Southern Council YouTube channel tomorrow. Please note, all guests will have their microphone muted when they join the meeting. You'll be asked to remain on mute unless I ask you to speak, for example, in the three minute slot reserved for objectors, the applicant supporters and all councillors. Please do not open your microphone until I've given you permission to speak. Attendees who are using the telephone dining function on a smartphone are asked to mute their microphone directly on their devices. Open microphones may cause feedback. To ensure this virtual meeting runs smoothly, only one individual will be allowed to speak at a time. Any person speaking must be permitted to finish what they're saying without interruption. And if I request an individual stop speaking, they should do so immediately. Interruptions may result in you being disconnected from this meeting. If a member of the committee wishes to speak, could I ask them to indicate this via the raised hand symbol or on the message board? Members of the public are reminded that the message board is not for public use. Any messages left on the message board by members of the public will be disregarded by committee members. Please note, all guests were made attendees after they've entered the meeting. A message should now have shown on your screen to indicate that this has been done. Bearing in mind that a recording of this meeting will be posted on the Council's YouTube channel, and if you are planning to speak at this meeting, you may choose to switch off your camera so that only your voice will be heard. Members of the public who are disconnected from the meeting due to technical difficulties should use the link or dining instructions they, they were sent initially to return to this meeting. If a member of the committee or officer loses internet connection or, or power, can they please inform the clerk of this via the WhatsApp group immediately so that we can adjourn the meeting until the connection has been restored. Members of the public are welcome to record, screenshot or tweet the public proceedings of the meeting. Copies of the Council's protocol for reporting and filming is available on the Southwark Council website. During the meeting, members of the committee will not access the internet as it effectively relates to the official business of the meeting, send or receive emails, text, message or tweet concerning the business of the committee to anyone outside the meeting. Please note that members may be accessing the agenda papers via the internet. Now, I would now like, like to ask officers to introduce themselves and explain their role at this meeting. So if I will begin with the planning officers, and if I may begin with the director of planning, please would you introduce yourself. Uh, Chair, yes, I'm Simon Bevan. I'm the director of planning and I advise the committee on general matters relating to planning. Thank you. Thank you. If I can ask uh, Terry McLennan to introduce himself. Terence McLennan, I'm one of the team leaders in the strategic applications team and I'm the case officer for both of the items we presented to committee this evening. Very good. And I can ask, invite Michael Tukaris to introduce himself. Hello everybody, my name is Michael Tukaris. I'm Group Manager Design and Conservation and I've been involved in the development of both cases uh, that are presented to the Planning Committee today. Thank you. If I can ask uh, Alex Oyebade to introduce himself. Uh, thanks, uh, my name is Alex Oyebade. I'm the team leader for Transport Planning. I'll be advising on the transport highway implications of this development proposal. Very good. Are, are there any other planning officers present? Then I'll go to legal officers. Any other planning officers? Very good. In that case, I'll go on to the legal officer. If I invite John Gorst to introduce himself. Good evening. My name is John Gorst, uh, and I'll be advising the committee in relation to legal issues and any governance matters. Thank you. And if I can invite uh, Gerald, Constitution Officer, to introduce himself, please. Good evening. My name is Gerald Goler. I am the Constitutional Officer and Clerk of this committee. I'm here to minute the committee meeting and to advise on the procedures for hearing the items and on decision making. Very good. Thank you very much. 
Uh, and thank you for those introductions. I will now proceed on to the um, uh, agenda. So the first item on the agenda are apologies. And of course, uh, as I understand it, there are no apologies for this meeting. We currently have a full house. But I'm now going to do go to item two, which is confirmation of voting members. I will now, um, I will now ask uh, members of the committee to confirm that they are voting members of this committee. May I begin with Councillor Whitten? Can you confirm that you are a voting member? I can confirm I'm a voting member. Can I invite uh, uh, Councillor Barry Hargrove to confirm that you are a voting member? Yeah, I'm a voting member, Chair. Thank you. Can you invite uh, uh, Councillor Dale Morris to confirm you are a voting member? Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Very good. Can I invite uh, Councillor Mark Ewan to confirm that you are a voting member? Yes, Chair, I'm a voting member. Very good. Can I invite uh, Councillor Damien O'Brien to confirm that you are a voting member? Yes, voting member, Chair. Very good. Councillor uh, uh, Catherine Rowe to confirm you are a voting member? I can confirm I'm a voting member, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cleo Soames can confirm you are a voting member? Good evening, Chair. Yes, I'm a voting member. Very good and welcome. And I can also confirm that I'm, I'm a Councillor Martin Seaton, Chair of the Committee and also a voting member. Okay. I will now go to item three, notification of any item of business which the Chair deems urgent. Now, the following additional documents have been circulated before this meeting. Um, members should have in your possession, one, the addendum report relating to items 5.1 and 5.2, and also, of course, your members pack. Um, can I just confirm that all members have received these documents? Is, is there a member that have, have not received these documents? You've all received them? That's great. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. I will now move on to item four, disclosure of interest and dispensation. Does any member wish to declare any interest or dispensation in respect to any item or issue to be considered at this meeting? Are there any declarations? No, Chair. Very good, thank you very much. I'll now proceed to item five, which are the minutes, which is of course pages three to eight of the agenda pack. Can we approve that these amended minutes as a correct record of the meeting held on Monday, the 1st of June, 2020? Are these minutes agreed? Agreed. Thank you, Ver. And does anyone wish to uh, second this? Just make yeah. sure. I'll second. Yep. Very uh, good. Uh, I believe we need to formally vote. Again, I forget it. We need to vote and we now confirm that these are an, an accurate record. Are we confirmed? Agreed. 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 There's no dissension and I'm sure the clerk will accept that that's unanimous. I will now move on. Thank you. I will now move on to item six, which is development management. The next item of business concerns the determination of planning applications. I would like to remind everyone of the committee's guidance on the conduct of business. Officers will present the report, outline their recommendations and answer questions raised by the committee. If present wishing to speak, the following may then address the committee for no more than three minutes each. A spokesperson representing any objector to the application. By now, you need to identify a single spokesperson. And if more than one objector wishes to speak, the time will be divided accordingly within the three, meet, three minutes time slot, followed by the applicant or their agent, and they're indeed followed by the spokesperson representing any supporter of the application who live within 100 metres of the development site. And last but not least, a, a ward councillor representing the area affected by the proposal. Each speaker should restrict their comments to the planning aspects of the proposal and should avoid repeating information which is already in the report. The meeting is not a hearing where all participants present evidence to be examined by other participants. At the end of each representation, the committee may ask questions of the presenter. Speakers should lead the committee on subject on which they would welcome further questioning. Ward members in attendance of those nominated to speak on behalf of objectors supported and applicant may be asked further questions, brief, uh, brief contributions in case any issues need to be clarified after they've addressed the, uh, the committee. This is not an opportunity to take part in the debate of the committee though. After receiving all submission, the, the committee will debate the application and consider the recommendations. 
This is a, a council committee meeting which is open to the public. There should be no interruption from members of the public. And finally, I would like everyone present to know that although the planning committee comprises members of different political parties, we are not politically whipped. Our decisions are made in accordance with the council's planning policy and based on the information contained within the relevant report, together with the consultation responses and any verbal submissions made today. How we approach this application is set out in the development management report in item five. And if members are happy to note that report, we will move on to considering the planning uh, applications. Are, are, are members content? Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Now, we're now moving on to um, item 6.1, which is the 40, uh, 40 to 44 Bermondsey Street, Finnegan's Yard Warehouse, and 9 to 17 Finnegan's Yard, and the, the land adjacent to 1 to 7 Snowsfield, which is uh, members pages 13 to 131 of the agenda pack, and the relevant pages uh, 1 to 2 of the uh, agenda report. But before we begin this item, I, I'd like to put forward a motion. Uh, I, I, I would like the committee to know that I have discussed this item with the director of planning and have raised with him certain aspects of the application and its imp impact on the conservation area, which I feel requires further explanation. I would, I would therefore like to propose a motion to defer the item so that these aspects can be more fully explained and brought back to a future committee. Does anyone wish to second my motion? I'll second, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Whittam, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, just, to be, just to be quite clear, so the proposal is to adjourn this item and allow for further discussion between the department and the applicants so the, the the concerns i've raised in relation to the conservation area can be fully explored and uh, resolved by a, a future committee uh, what i will do now i'll go to a vote and as is required here i will therefore take a roll, roll call of of, of attending uh, committee members and if i may begin with the first committee member Councillor Cap Whittam, are, are you for, against, or we should abstain on the motion? For, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Barry Hargrove, are you for, against, or we should abstain on the motion? Abstain, Chair. Very good. Councillor Adele Morris, are you for, against, or abstain on the motion? For, Chair. Very good. Councillor Marky Newans, are you for, against, or abstain on the motion? For, Chair. Very good, thank you. Councillor Damon O'Brien, are you for, against, or abstain on the motion? For, Chair. Very good. Councillor uh, Catherine Rose, are you for, against, or abstain on the motion? I'm for, Chair. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cleo Soames, are you for, against, or abstain on the motion? For, Chair. And I, I also vote for the motion. So the motion is carried and that item is deferred. Ready? So in that case, we can now move on very quickly. I can go to the right section here. Maybe for a second. Get myself organised here. So we move to. So we now move to item six point two, and I'll get to the relevant scripting for you. I seem to have lost, but it's all very nice. There we go. And uh, forgive me on this. My 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 screen has suddenly come blank, but bear me for a moment. I know that these are intending to. It's going to happen to me eventually, hasn't it? Hold on, one second. It will come up in a second. There we go. It's, it's just my screen's now recovered itself. There we go. I will now move on to item 6.2 land bounded by St. Thomas Street, Fenning Street, 
Phineas Yard and Snowfield, including numbers one to seven Fenning Street and number nine Fenning Street. That's uh, SE one three QR, which members are pages one three two to two four four of the agenda pack and pages three to five of the addendum report. Can I ask the officer considering the report to invite yourself and um, in, in, be invited to to present your report? Thank you, Chair. Um, Michael and I will both be presenting um, this item. Um, I will do the first part, then Michael will present on design and heritage, and then I will follow up with a short conclusion. Thank you. You may go ahead. Okay. The application site refers to approximately 0.3 hectares of land bound by St Thomas Street, Fenning Street, Vinegar Yard and Snowsfields. The site oh. comprises numbers 1 to 7 Fenning Street and number 9. Forgive me, Street. forgive me for interrupting. Uh, I think the pages are not um, aligned at the moment. Uh, yeah, could you just, you may just want to start again, but the, okay. the pages were not aligned. Sorry. It's okay. Sharing the screen. Can you see that screen? You... Oh, I can now, yes. Are we okay to start? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Okay. The application site refers to approximately 0 0.3 hectares of land bound by St Thomas Street, Fenning Street, Vinegar Yard and Snowsfields. The site comprises numbers 1 to 7 Fenning Street and number 9 Fenning Street, which are three-storey warehouse buildings to the southwest corner. The site has historically been in industrial and commercial use. It has also been used as an open car park and more recently to house temporary offices and for storage related to the redevelopment of London Bridge Station. At present, the site benefits from a temporary permission for food and drink stalls, retail units and a bar and event space, along with art installations and artist studios. This space collectively is known as Vinegar Yard and is facilitated through the provision of hoarding and associated alterations, as well as the use of the existing buildings on the site. The surrounding areas comprise a mix of uses, including office, retail and residential. There are also cultural uses within the area. Directly to the north of the site is London Bridge Station, whilst to the northwest is the London Bridge Tower, known as the Shard. The recent redevelopment of the station includes an entrance to St Thomas Street opposite the site, which, is also, which also provides a range of commercial units within the railway arches fronting on St Thomas Street. The west of the site across Fenning Street is 60 to 68 St Thomas Street, known as Beckett House, a six-storey office building used by the Home Office, Border and Immigration Service. Beyond this is the York Clinic on Western Street, a five-storey building, and Guy's Hospital Tower, a 34-storey building. Immediately to the south and adjacent to the existing buildings on the site is the Horseshoe Inn Public House, which also comprises accommodation to the upper floors, and to the east of this is a large warehouse building. Residential dwellings are located along Snowsfields. The southernmost parts of the application site are located within the Bermondsey Street Conservation Area. The conservation area incorporates one of the existing buildings to the southwest corner of the site and a portion of the land to the south, centrally within the site. Further to the west, beyond the Guy's Hospital Tower, by approximately 280 metres, is the Borough High Street Conservation Area. The Tuggy Street Conservation Area lies to the north of London Bridge Station. Um, and nearby listed buildings include the Railway Viaduct on Crucifix Lane, the Shipwright Arms and Guy's Hospital Main Building. In terms of accessibility, the site benefits from the highest level of public transport with a rating of 6B, reflecting the proximity of London Bridge Railway Station and associated Jubilee in northern lines of the London Underground. Bus routes are available to the north of the site on Tuggy Street and west on Borough High Street. The proposal is for a large office-led mixed-use development with new retail and a music venue or cultural space. The development would be formed of two buildings. The main building would be located on St Thomas Street and Fenning Street and would be up to 20 storeys in height. The second building, the pavilion, would be located close to the apex of the site at St Thomas Street and Snowsfields. Both buildings would be linked by basements. The proposal includes public realm works and the provision of a new public plaza between the main building and the pavilion adjacent to the current Vinegar Yard access and would provide a new east to west pedestrian route through the site. 
Servicing would take place from the west of the site on Fenning Street, where the lower levels of the building would be set back to allow for a loading bay. A total of 413 cycle storage spaces and cycle walkers would be provided at basement level, directly accessed from Fenning Street, and an additional 116 short stay cycle storage spaces would also be provided across the site. The application site forms part of the eastern boundary of a series of adjacent development plots that have become known as St Thomas Street East. The adjacent sites include Beckett House at 60 St Thomas Street and the Vinegar Yard Warehouse and the buildings at 40 to 44 Bermondsey Street. The western boundary of St Thomas Street East is formed by the Capital House development. The current application has been subject to two full rounds of formal consultation undertaken by the Council. 81 objections and 62 letters of support have been received. In terms of objections, the main issues raised relate to heritage impacts, design issues such as height, scale and massing, and amenity impacts such as wind impacts. 12 objections have mentioned impacts on daylight and overshadowing. Since completion and circulation of the addendum, a further 11 objections and three letters of support have been received. Moving on to impacts, in terms of daylight and sunlight, the full impacts are set out in the case officer's report from paragraphs 167 to 236, and I'll come on to these points later in the presentation. The site is located within the Central Activity Zone, the London Bridge District Town Centre, the London Bridge Borough and Bankside Opportunity Area and the Strategic Cultural Area. The development proposes new offices, new retail and a new cultural space or music venue. In land use terms, the proposal to redevelop the site to provide new high quality office floor space alongside a range of acceptable town centre, cultural and retail uses is fully supported. As part of the new office provision, the developer would provide affordable workspace in order to meet the emerging policy of the draft London plan and the new suburb plan that requires 10% affordable workspace. The on-site provision would equate to 5.15%, with the remaining balance being met by an in payment of £3,638,959. The on-site affordable workspace would be located at basement level, and whilst office space is traditionally provided on upper levels, the needs and requirements of suburb studios who are expected to operate the affordable workspace and their prospective tenants are such that the proposed space at basement level one is attractive and would meet the needs of the artists and makers who would occupy that space. Another benefit of the space being provided in the basement is that the discount over the market rent level is more substantial than it would be on the upper levels. And in this instance, the discount being offered to suburb studios is 60% on market rent levels. The applicant has submitted a detailed daylight and sunlight assessment and the results of the daylight assessment demonstrate that there would be a number of windows and rooms that would not meet the relevant daylighting standards of the BRE. For the most part, these impacts would be minor in nature and would be balanced out by compliant daylight distribution levels. However, it is noted that there would be major impact for the buildings at 8 Melia Street 36 Snowsfields and 8 to 20 Snowsfields. In terms of 8 Melia Street 36 Snowsfields, Vertical sky component has been tested at 141 windows and no skyline daylight distribution has been tested within 66 rooms. A total of 70 windows would continue to have BRE compliant VSC and as such, as such are considered to experience a negligible impact as a result of the development. Of the remaining windows, there would be six with minor impacts of VSC reductions at between 22.4% and 29.9%. 21 windows with moderate reductions of between 31.2% and 39.8%. and 44 windows that would experience major reductions of between 40.3% and 82.7%. It is important to note that 44 of the 71 affected windows that serve bedrooms, which the BRE considers as, having, as being less sensitive to daylight fluctuations. Additionally, one of the six windows experienced a minor impact. 12 of the 21 windows experiencing a moderate impact and 23 of the 44 windows experiencing a major impact serve rooms that benefit from other windows that would remain fully BRE compliant. It's also important to note that this property has large recessed balconies which themselves can be obstacles that restrict daylight and in many cases as noted by the BRE can be the main factor in, in the relative loss of light. 
In terms of no skyline and daylight distribution, it is positive to note that all of the assessed rooms would continue to have BIE compliant daylight. As such, whilst the impacts on VSC would be major adverse, the impacts on daylight distribution would be negligible and on balance, considering the overall impact, form of the building, with the large recessed balconies, the impact on this property is considered to be acceptable. The building at 8 to 20 Snowsfields lies directly to the south of the application site on the corner of Melier Place and Snowsfields. The existing building rises to four storeys and accommodates commercial premises on the ground floor and maisonettes, flatty dwellings on the upper levels. The homes are accessed from a central stair core which leads on to deck access to the individual units. A total of 24 windows serving 19 rooms have been assessed at 8 to 20 snowsfields for VSC and no skyline respectively. In terms of VSC, all 24 windows would experience a major loss in the range of 51.8% to 98%, and residual VSC levels would range up to 13.2% from 0.1%. With regards to no skyline, five rooms would experience minor losses, two rooms would have moderate losses, and the remaining 12 rooms would see, see major losses. In terms of no skyline, this would be categorised also as a major adverse impact. The affected rooms and windows at 8 to 20 snowsfields obtain most of their daylight directly from the north. The southern facade facing onto snowsfields would remain unaffected by the proposal. At present, the northern facade, which would be affected by the development, looks over a very low rise and partially cleared site, and as such has generally unhindered access to daylight. The site allocation makes reference to tall buildings, and it is acknowledged that this is a currently undeveloped site in a central and sustainable location, which has been identified as suitable for a tall building. As such, any building of scale on this site is likely to have an impact on the daylight of 8 to 20 snowsfields. Now, as previously mentioned, the affected windows gain most of their daylight from the north. The facade of the existing building where the affected windows are located contains the access stairway and deep deck access. The BRE recognises that um, balconies and overhangs can impact on a building's ability to obtain daylight. As recommended by the BRE, it's appropriate to undertake a review whereby the balconies are removed in order to gauge how much of the impact is caused by balconies and overhangs. In this case, Having removed the balconies and the deck access, the residual VSC values, which were previously 0.1 to 13.2%, would increase to 77 to 13.2%. And it can be demonstrated that most of the affected windows at 8 to, snow, 8 to 20 snows fields are compromised to a significant extent by the deck access and overhangs. Overall, the impacts on 8 to 8, to 8 Melier Street and 36 snows fields and 8 to 20 snowsfields would be major adverse. However, on balance, um, given the site-specific circumstances and the various benefits that would come forward from the scheme, they are considered acceptable on balance. A wind and microclimate assessment has been completed as part of the environmental statement, and this assessment focuses on whether the development would create or exacerbate any undesirable wind conditions either on the site or within the surrounding area. High wind speeds can affect pedestrian comfort levels, as well as potentially having safety implications unsuitable of an area's desired use. The assessment is focused on areas within and around the site at ground level, including areas of outdoor seating, as well as roof terraces and conditions around the pavilion building. Additionally, areas around other buildings surrounding the site and associated pedestrian crossings and thoroughfares have been tested. The assessment of the wind conditions requires a standard against which the measurements can be compared. This assessment of the wind tunnel results adopts the loss and comfort criteria which are the well-established guidelines that have been in use for over 30 years. The Lawson criteria establishes four pedestrian activities, taking into account that less active pursuits require more benign wind conditions, and the four categories include sitting, standing, strolling and walking. Current wind levels at the application site are relatively calm and are considered suitable for the current uses. Once developed, the conditions at the site would be windier, but still appropriate for the intended use at most locations. The ES has identified that there would be some significant wind effects at the northwestern corner of the development site. 
and at an existing railway vault on St Thomas Street to the north of the site, and an amenity space on Melia Street and Fenning Street, as well as within the rooftop amenity space of the development itself. In order to reduce the wind speeds in these areas, mitigation has been incorporated into the design of the building, including the provision of canopies over building entrances, screening and appropriate landscaping. With the wind mitigation measures included in the design, the ES concludes that the development would not result in any major adverse wind impacts, either as an individual development or when considered as part of a cumulative development with other schemes in the area. Some beneficial wind effects have been identified, meaning that some areas, both on-site and off-site, are calmer than the desired conditions. In terms of the cumulative impact, it's noted that the wind conditions in and around the site would be expected to range from suitable to sitting, to walking use during the windiest season. During the summer season, wind conditions would generally be expected to, one, to be one category calmer than those during the windiest season. The impacts on wind and pedestrian comfort are therefore considered acceptable and appropriate for the desired use. In terms of transport, the development would incorporate 413 basement cycle parking spaces, as well as six folding bike walkers. This provision would sit alongside 116 short stay cycle parking spaces across the application site. The level of cycle parking is compliant with current and draft London plan policies. The applicant would be required to make a financial contribution towards the cycle hire scheme, and this would be secured under the Section 106 agreement with an ongoing engagement with TfL. The provision of cycle parking spaces and associated facilities will be a condition requirement of any consent issued, and there would be an opportunity to increase cycle parking further. The servicing arrangements for this development would involve servicing from a loading bay on Fenning Street. Given that there are several developments on this stretch of St Thomas Street, it's considered to be imperative that there would be service and delivery consolidation. Details of delivery and service management would be secured under the Section 106 agreement, and this will provide full details of how consolidation measures would be provided and would demonstrate that the proposed servicing arrangements would be robust and sufficient to meet the requirements of the development and should be supported by daily arrival, unloading and departure profile showing how the proposed facilities will be used. The development would have a rational, legible, open and well-considered site layout that would reinforce streets, provide new pedestrian routes and improve connectivity. The development would be car free, which would meet the council's objectives of reducing trips by car and minimise car parking, whilst at the same time promoting public transport and encouraging walking and cycling, which would support the council's sustainability goals. The impacts of the development on the road network, as well as impacts on pedestrians, cyclists and amenity, has been fully considered as part of the ES, with the outcomes of the assessment demonstrating that the development would have no significant impacts. The development has been shown to have a very limited impact on the public transport network and vehicle trips would also be limited. The London Plan sets out the development proposal should make the fullest contribution to minimising carbon dioxide emissions in accordance with the energy hierarchy, be lean, be clean and be green. This sets out that development must have a carbon dioxide improvement of at least 35% above the current building regulations. In this instance, Taken together, the Be Green, Be Clean and Be Green measures would achieve a total carbon reduction of 46%. And the proposed office accommodation is expected to achieve a BRAM excellent rating, although there is a commitment to work towards achieving BRAM outstanding. The carbon reduction and sustainability measures are a positive aspect of the development and a relative BRAM rating would be secured by condition. Michael will now take you through the design and heritage impacts. Thank you, uh, Terence. The main building um, is designed as a singular block that runs east to west. I think of, um, can I, um, if I can stop sharing a second, I can uh, get the the other presentation. Sorry. Or well, the member pack that you have before you. Sorry. I'll stop sharing that a second. Sorry, forgive me. I'm just um, I'm just trying to get the the member pack as it was um, 
before. Not a problem. We, we still get used to technology. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. Um, forgive me, I'll just be a second. That's OK. It's not working, Chair. I'll, be, I'll just be a second. Uh, right. Uh, Could we be asking well, questions to uh, the other officer in the interim? Yeah. Uh, first, well, before I do that, um, I would want to start that. If, uh, if well, uh, I'll, I'll just, yes. I'll, I'll rely on this presentation. Sorry, Chair. Okay. Um, I'll do it now again. Okay. Um, and I'll just, uh, can you see that? Uh, yes, I can. Brilliant. So the proposal is designed um, as... Chair, sorry, if I yes. can interject there. Is Councillor yes. O'Brien back? Please. Oh, Councillor O'Brien. Councillor O'Brien. Uh, yeah, no, I can hear you. You're on the near shot. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Councillor. Very good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sir Gerald. And thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Uh, Michael, yes, please continue. Thank you, Sir uh, Chair. The, the, the proposal is uh, designed as a stepped linear block fronting onto St Thomas Street at the northern end of the site and running from east to west with a setback along the street for planting of trees. To the west is Fenning Street where the building will be serviced and at the centre of the site um, is an open space in front of the nearby um, uh, former vi vinegar ware uh, warehouse. The site extends from Melia Street uh, to Melia Street uh, in the south and the Horseshoe Public Inn uh, at the south. Um, the rotunda, uh, which is at the corner of the at the corner of the site, is three stories high and is intended to m match the scale of the vinegar warehouse. And uh, the main building itself steps up from seven stories in height, uh, terracing back and away from the conservation area up to its full 20 stories um, in, in height. Um, there's a small uh, warehouse at the southwest corner uh, on Fenning Street, uh, which sits within the conservation area and is recognised as a positive contributor in the conservation area appraisal. The proposal seeks to demolish this small and much uh, altered uh, undesignated heritage asset and to replace it with the new building. Um, the building uh, has been designed uh, as a cluster of angled vertical warehouses, each finished in a different tone of brick and highly articulated, especially at the top. Uh, to the south and standing almost, almost separate is the lift and stair core um, of the building, clad in glass and designed as a separate element in the composition. At the ground floor, the building includes a, a large double height um, um, a hall uh, which will serve both as part of the commercial and retail offer on the site, as well as leading to the basement levels and the um, and the um, main reception area for the building, uh, which will then provide access to the rest of the building. Uh, the basement also includes, as mentioned uh, by uh, Terence, a a um, a venue, uh, a, la a music venue, um, and which can be accessed from the rotunda pavilion. Uh, the design is high quality um, and reflects the industrial character of the area. And the proposal has been considered in terms of its impact on the conservation area with views along Bermondsey Street, the Tanner Street Park and Leather Market Gardens. Uh, we've also tested it for the views on the LVMF with no impact. Um, officers are satisfied that this is an exemplary design, especially at the ground floor, where it introduces a high degree of permeability with high quality public realm and active engaging uses throughout. Uh, there is also no harm arising for, to the conservation area and the design of the proposal is supported by the GLA and the design review panel. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, are there any questions on the presentation report? Uh, could members uh, indicate one moment before I begin, let's make sure I've got the chat up and if members could uh, indicate 
in the chat. And I've, I've seen Councillor Morris first of all, and followed by Councillor Rose. Please, Councillor Morris, you may go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's just, um, oh, I'm just going to take these out. It's something that I just wanted to point out that's in the report that I wasn't very happy to see, if I may, Chair. And given that the report has gone out to the public already, um, so on page um, 140, uh, paragraph 29, uh, and this this appeared in the previous um, Sellers report as well, um, it refers to the site at Capitol House having a resolution to grant consent, which is fine. And then it says, having been received positively by the planning committee on the 14th of May 2019. So first of all, it wasn't unanimously voted in favour, and I wouldn't describe it as having been re received positively by the planning committee. And I wanted to ask the officer, I've never ever seen anything other than, than factual reference to other schemes in the area. Uh, you know, it was granted, it wasn't, it's been built, it hasn't. And I just wondered why that has appeared in these two reports, please. This will take Terence or Michael. Terence, I assume. Um, yeah, it's just indicating that it had been recommended for approval. I mean, the rare house scheme that we are receiving positively, including the provision of affordable housing and so on. But, but uh, it, uh, I still have never uh, seen uh, that in on, a report. Hold on. Forgive me, Councillor. Forgive me, Councillor. If, if I may, at this point, uh, I, I believe Councillor Moses' uh, observation is a uh, accurate observation. Uh, it'd be useful for our reports to show um, factual information. As it, as it wasn't you, a unanimous vote, um, it, it would not be right to say it, would, it was received favorably. We are a sort of democratic environment here. Uh, I, I think it, it should be, whilst I'm, I'm, I'm conscious the wordings are, are being used, um, I haven't. Um, I, I've noted that comment, and, I, and I'm sure that um, both all officers, as well as um, Mr. Bevan here, has noted that that we would like to just stick to factual information and not to ex express a view about the feelings of committee members. Okay. Um, so that's duly noted, Councillor Councillor yeah. Morris. Your, your next question. Thank you. Your next question. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. So my next question, uh, if I could just get some clarification on the affordable workspace on page 152. So um, it says that, and the officer said that uh, it's going to be a 60% reduction on the market rent is going to be offered to Southwark Studios. But the section 106, um, in paragraph 89, it says that the section 106, the workspace is provided for a 30 year period at a discount of 25% on the market rent level. So I just wondered uh, if you could explain which one uh, or how, how, I suppose, if there is going to be a 60% reduction, I presume Miles. that's what's been negotiated now with exiting. the studios. Um, then you know how that how that's going to be secured given given what's going in the 106. Um, I, and, I then, and then uh, just one other thing, which is, and um, why are we accepting an in lieu payment for offside affordable workspace? And indeed, where do we think we're going to find somewhere else in the area that can provide workspace uh, offsite? Thank you, Chair. Yep. Good questions. Thank you, uh, Terence. Okay, the 25% listed in paragraph 89 is just a drafting error, um, so we can change that, um, or we can note that, that that is incorrect. In terms okay. of... Forgive me, for, forgive me, Towns. if I could make sure that the clerk has taken note of that amendment, if I can just confirm, Gerald, if, if you're there, or Tim? Yes, Chair. You have noted that amendment? Yes, Chair. Thank you. Okay, continue, Towns, please. Um, in terms of the provision of the 10% on site, um, the developer will be able to give you more information on that, but my understanding is this relates to the fact that um, the upper levels of the building at ground floor and the mezzanine are for the flexible A1, A2 and A3 use. 
other affo if affordable workspace was provided in the office building, um, it would be difficult to get an operator that would manage both parts of it if they were together, if they weren't one contiguous space. The discount that would be offered to Suffolk Studios for the basement, it wouldn't be able to be offered for one of the upper levels because the market rent levels are so much higher. Um, and the policy does allow for um, uh, uh, the provision of an in-lieu payment, which um, in reference to where it would be spent, it would be um, paid um, and the local economy team would use that money on projects or to do, to deliver affordable workspace in the area. But precisely where it would be spent, I, I don't know at this stage. Chair, mm. sure, sure. if, if I may come back on that, I would of have course. expected as with our affordable housing sequential test, where we have the on-site and then uh, off identified off-site and then as an absolute last uh, resort uh, somewhere else in the borough. And I know we do jump very quickly to the last resort uh, and in the, elsewhere in the borough on affordable housing. But nevertheless, I, I, I'd like to see um, some idea of where we might be given the redevelopment of this area is in terms of office space, if there is any thought about where that might be, because I think it's quite important, Chair. I, I hear you, and it, it's a, an interesting point of consideration. Uh, I, I wonder if Terence or, or Simon wants, wishes to comment on this, because clearly I'm assuming that um, how this money is spent will come back to committee for, for, for a final decision. Am I right in saying that? Chair, sure, if, uh, if I could just say, I, I, I think one of the one of the points about affordable workspace policy, which is um, which is a, a new policy, an emerging policy that we're, we're introducing now, um, one of the things about it that is being discussed with the local economy team is that there isn't a one size fits all as to what is appropriate for uh, developing the local economy with more affordable workspace. Um, that there may be different forms of workspace that may be extremely useful to um, local businesses, uh, which we don't, we haven't explored all of those possibilities yet. So that 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 range of possibilities of how affordable workspace can be delivered is still being explored and developed in relation to that policy. But what we can do is we can put. Um, into the uh, section 106 agreement, uh, the 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 um, uh, some requirements that uh, limit the use of that funding to um, certain areas of the borough, that that would be possible. Uh, I think maybe, and uh, it is unfortunate we hadn't discussed this previously, of course, uh, but <laughs> but clearly. Uh, on, on the basis, we have a formula for uh, affordable homes and how the sewer money will be spent. And we're just saying that we don't have a formula for a formula uh, for affordable workspace and how that might be spent. Uh, I think, therefore, on, on that basis, whilst I've, I've noted it in, in the report, I, I believe it will be incumbent on the committee to receive regular update from yourselves of so, um, what are the thinking and how and, and, and to what degree you have developed the, those ideas um, and and if, if I may suggest um, Councillor Morris and, and of course Simon that um, we receive a report six months hence so we're, we're clear how it, what the proposals are and we can either help to develop those proposals or indeed approve them at that at that time would that be reasonable um, uh, colleague would that be reasonable yes chair thank you simon if i can okay uh, yes. yep. okay uh, uh, very good uh, yeah, thank you very good so that's that's an informative and let's ensure that the clerk has captured the, that agreement uh Gerald? i have to very good very good thank you Thank you for your questions, Councillor Morris. And was there, did you, was there a further question there, Councillor Morris, to make sure I've not lost it? That's great. Thank you very much indeed. If I can move on to Councillor Rose. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. Um, Councillor O'Brien and then Councillor Rose, I'm sorry. No, I think Catherine's ahead of me. Oh, she was? Yeah. Oh, in that case, uh, uh, absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> Councillor Rose. Ah. 
Catherine Vose. And this she's not there. <laughs> <laughs> what a moment. So, but uh, Joe, can you confirm yeah, Catherine Vose is in the meeting? Hello, I am still in the meeting. Oh, <laughs> Just, you are. <laughs> uh, yes, I, okay. I got lost in the pre-meet for a second. Sorry. Oh, oh, um, right. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you have a question uh, for the officers of the report? Yes, I do. Um, first of all, um, for Terence, let's start with um, paragraph seventy-two in the report. Oh, forgive me, Councillor Rose. Oh, forgive me, for interrupting. I, I'm, I'm just very conscious that I gave an undertaking that, uh, on an hourly basis, will have at least a five-minute intermission. Um, it's it, it's now half past seven or thereabouts. I think before I take your question, we'll. I think what I'd like to do, if I may, Councillor Rose, I'm sorry, if we take a five-minute intermission. And we'll, we'll reconvene at um, eight, sorry, seven thirty-five. We have a five-minute intermission. Thank you. Is, is that agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you very much. Five-minute intermission, then. Thank you. <laughs> 